Tools like Figma tend to get really chaotic unless you have set up some organized structure or setup. In this last video of the four part video series of my raw and uncut UX design process, I'll go over how I properly organize and communicate my design projects on Figma. If you haven't watched the other three videos yet, make sure you do. If you already have, let's go. To make things easy for you, I have created a Figma file library that you can duplicate from the Figma community and use throughout your projects. I use this for all of my projects, making communication and discoverability so much easier. The link to the Figma file is linked right below in the descriptions. The file is pretty simple. Let me show you what the file contains and how you can use it in your design projects. After you have made a copy of this Canvas Guides Figma file, you can make sure that you publish this as a library and as soon as that's available as a library file then you can load that in to any of your Figma projects and then make use of all of these components and assets. So the following assets are included. You have everything numbered and structured. Number one is description. This component helps add contextual information about the mockups or wireframes that you'll be adding below. So it's split up into two different segments. You have the left side, which is for the project title. And then on the right side, you have all the types of information like author name or designer name, date, iteration number, description, fidelity. And you can switch this up and change this to your liking. For the second segment, you have section, which is pretty much a title component. Uh, it helps you section your wireframe or mockups into a main category of flows. So for instance, you can use this for your design project and maybe you have an onboarding section or onboarding category with all of the different screens related to the onboarding flow. Uh, then in that case, you categorize your, your designs that way. And then the third and the last main component for the Canvas Guides is flow, the flow section. And it's a title component as well. And it helps you sort things out in a subcategory. So if this is the main category, then you have the subcategory, which outlines the flows. And then at the very bottom, you have some note assets as well uh, you don't necessarily have to use these as annotations or sticky note cards um, but i think it's absolutely useful to use something outside of the the built-in figma comments uh, in some cases it might be very helpful to have some kind of visual guide but now that figma launched figma widgets there are a bunch of different really good widgets that you can use as well for this and I'll show you an example of how this is used on, on a project. So basically, you have the top row for the project title. You organize all of the information here. And then right below, I add the section name. This can be onboarding, for instance. Then you have flow one, which might be all of the mobile screens. Flow two could, for instance, be all of the web screens. You add any of the notes or comments below and then you move into the next segment or next category, which could be, for instance, checkout flow or anything else, depending on what you're working on. Basically what you're doing is making it very easy for other people, team members, designers to look through your design files and find whatever they're looking for. If you haven't noticed already, you can create a thumbnail cover of your Figma files to make it stand out amongst all your gazillion Figma files in your account. I place a page all the way at the top or the bottom of my Figma file and create 90 to 20 by 1080 frames for the thumbnail cover. I leave about a 180 pixel padding on all four sides which usually ensures that any cover content that I place in the center is always visible. I customize the thumbnails depending on which projects that I'm working on. Usually I make sure to include the fundamentals like the name of the project, client or company name and maybe a short description if needed. 
The downside of Figma files page structure on the left side is that a lot of designers just keep the default page names, which is a page followed by the page number. And as you work on a project, you might fall into the bad habit of creating a new page every time you make a new iteration. And you will end up with a Figma file that have like 30 different pages. The upside, however, is that you can customize this to fit your needs. I usually do the following. I create pages with blank names to help create a separator between different segments. And as I work on a project, I leave all of the more creative, playful and explorative stuff all the way at the bottom together with any reference libraries, mood boards and research material. And the higher I move up in the list, I create separate sections for a higher fidelity of the design. All the way up top, I put the final design deliveries. Let me show you an example of how I would organize and structure the scale project design. Now, as you keep working on a project like this, 
you would move closer and closer to a high fidelity final mockup. And as you do, you now have a structure that allows you to be as specific as you want to be. If you feel like you need to explain the details of any of the specific flows or a component, then you can do so in the note cards and add them as visual notes right along the relevant flow and underneath the respective frames. There are also additional plugins available in the Figma community that you can choose to use in order to be even more transparent with your design communication. Plugins like Redlines and Annotated are two of my favorite ones to help break down details whenever you feel like Figma comments aren't enough. If you've made it all the way to this point, I am proud of you. And I'm not gonna lie, planning these four videos took a whole lot of time and planning for me as well. And I tried to not crank these videos with too much information. So I hope you're good. But I know it is overwhelming and it gets tough, but you're a G for sticking with me all the way through. I would love to hear your thoughts on this design process series and let me know in the comments below if you have any other comments, suggestions or feedback. If you like what I do and the videos that I put out, make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications and hit the like button below for more content like this. Bless y'all. Peace. Thank you.